with Batman and today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on adding a ship to Rudina, more specifically the player ship. Now first things first, you're going to need three things. Uh, first, you're going to need Blender, which is a free modeling program you can uh, get at blender.org. Second, you're going to need a general knowledge of Blender. I would do a tutorial on modeling in Blender, but there are some awesome tutorials out there already for Blender. and Even I'm learning the basics somewhat. I'm more of a 3D Studio Max guy myself. I don't know Blender all that well. And three, which if you're already watching this tutorial, you probably already have a copy of Rudina, which is what you're going to need for actually putting the ships in the game. Because Rudina actually comes with a Blender plugin. It's called Brendan Export, which is what you use to export the ship models into Rudina. And you can find that in the scripts folder in your Rudina install. To add that, you go to user preference, add ons, and then install from file. And that'll give you an uh, export option called Export Brendan, which, uh, you know, like I just said, exports into EGMs. I've pre-made a ship for this tutorial, which I'll post in the description in case you'd like to follow along with it or just tinker with it in the future. Before I do anything with the ship, I'm going to lay out some tips to remember while actually making your ship ready for the game. One, the ship's faces must be triangulated. It can't be in quads because as soon as you load it into the game, it's going to look like Swiss cheese. It's just going to have holes all over it. And you're just going to lose its... Uh, face data in the process so it'll just it'll look like Swiss cheese. Two for low poly ships like this you can use models as collision like your your base models as the collision models as well but for higher poly models you're gonna actually want to make a lower uh, poly version so oops open the wrong one for this one I actually had to make a much lower poly version or the, it would slow the game down because you have to do uh, uh, details with actual geometry so it ends up being a lot of polys. And three, when making the ship you got, because this is low poly we're only going to have to make two versions instead of the four but the two versions we're going to absolutely need is the flying version and the second version we're going to need is the parked version which is what you have when you're in the interior mode, you're roaming around or roaming around on the planet to exit through the airlock. You're going to need the uh, you're going to need another version of the model with a hole in it for the airlock. Now, first thing you'll notice about my ship, I have it actually cut into three three pieces. The reason behind that is two of the parts I'm going to make glow by bumping up its materials emit setting. So these rings here already have a glow material on it. I'm going to actually raise its emit up because I actually want the rings and the front window here to glow. I'll just quickly change that to blue or something. While you can have multiple materials on your ship, the actual emit and specular are all encompassing of the model. So if I were to add, if it was one whole, one whole object, if I bumped up the emit just on the faces of this ring, it would emit the whole ship regardless. Because it's just it's just concentrating the whole model. And like I said, that's not to say you can't have multiple materials for this. I actually have two. I'm gonna just quickly color this in. Just gonna leave it out like that for now. So that looks okay. Now since I have three objects here, I'm going to have to make one the parent, uh, drag these into the ship, because I want the ship object to be the parent object and these to be sub-objects. You can have as many sub-objects as you, <sighs> sorry, you can have as many sub-objects as you want, as long as you have one parent object. What we're going to do now is we're going to have to add the markers. Now there's three weapon markers we need to add and a airlock uh, marker, which is the interior route. But the weapon markers we're going to do first, which is gun barrel left, gun barrel right, and missile barrel. And that, that marks where the gunfire comes from, and that marks where the missiles come from on the actual ship. What we're going to use for that is we're going to use the plane axis. So we're going to just position those around in here. 
Oh, not too high. We're going to leave one gun barrel there. We'll just call it gun barrel right. And we'll, we'll copy that. Paste. I'll actually just move that to the opposite side. gun markers there. We'll actually copy that one more time. We'll paste it. And we will move that to the center. Yeah, I'm no uh, blender expert myself, so I tend to make a couple mistakes here. Now with these uh, three markers here, we can just drag them into the ship because they also have to be sub-objects of the ship. Now we'll just copy the, we'll actually just copy the missile barrel since it's right in the middle and we will use that as, we'll use the missile barrel as a uh, interior route, which will be the marker for the airlock on the back because we're going to be entering the ship right from the rear. Now the airlock actually spawns uh, the airlock outdoor right on top of this marker so we're gonna have to position it somewhat low so that way the entrance is somewhat in the middle. Okay now that we have all the markers in position and added it to our parent object we're gonna go and uh, clone all of it so we're gonna we're going to, oh, one of the things I forgot to do is move that into the ship, like that. Okay, now that we are actually ready for it, we're going to select all, and we're going to copy, and we're going to clone. So there, now we have a double of the ship. We'll just name this one Ship Open, just so we don't lose track of which one we're going to use. Now what I'm actually going to do to the back of this real quick is I'm going to add a opening right here and just optionally I'm going to add a ramp just like the uh, default ship just to make it easier to get in and out of. So just uh, bear with me for a moment. is to remember to turn all these uh, faces and triangulate them just to make sure they're all facing the right way so we're going to go to mesh faces and triangulate faces and that should that'll keep the Swiss cheese effect from happening and pretty much at that point now that we've got that in what I like to do uh, by the way is I like to add sort of like an inside line so that I if there is a bit of a lip or edge it helps take away from the visual effect and adds a bit of collision to the edges. Okay, now that we have everything set up, we have our flight ship model and our parked one, we need to fix the scale and rotation. Uh, right now my ship's model is are backwards. We want it to go with the Y. Uh, the little Y green arrow there. Also at this point our ship is a bit big. The default player ship is uh, 104 in length. So let's try to match that. So now you can make these any size you want, but just for simplicity I'm going to keep it at the size of the default player ship. But now we have over here the scale is all wrong. We, need, we want these all to be ones and we want the rotation to be all zeros. Else if we export it and then bring it into Rodina, it's going to be too it's going to be really big because it's about it's marked down to half size 
and it's going to be facing the wrong way still. So what we have to do is we have to select all, go to object, apply, rotation and scale, and that'll bring it everything back to what it's supposed to be. So pretty much at this point, we're, we're set for bringing it over into Rodina. So what we'll do is go to File, Export, and Export into Brandon. Now what it's going to do is it's going to export into the same folder you saved the blend fo file into. And it'll save it as uh, uh, the save file's name dot what the object's name is. And it'll export each object into a different file. So this will be ufo.ship.egm and ufo.shipopen.egm. So we're just going to go over to our files here, my exports into my projects folders. So yeah, they're right here. What we're going to do is we're going to select these and we're going to drag them over to the our Rodin install to data and then drop them in models. So you'll see I've already have some copies of it in here as I was testing it out earlier just to make sure it works. And uh, after we actually have the models in there, we still have to edit the script file that has the information on the player ship. So what we're going to go to is scripts and then uh, data gameplay. And the file we want to find is eg data ship player. We, you can open that in a notepad. I use notepad++ just because it's, it's uh, way cleaner and easier for me to see. I, I don't have very good vision. These are the two main things we're going to need to change along with these right here. So we're going to change these. Luckily, the end of the default ship's name is .ship.egm and .shipopen.egm, so we won't have to deal with that. All we have to do is change the ship one to UFO, so we're going to change that to UFO. You're going to want to do the same down here, because these, these two up here are the actual normal ship models, but these down here are the collision models. And because we're using low poly models, like I said, we don't have to, it'll be the same as the actual uh, normal player ship models. So now that we have that all changed, we can save and we can actually go ahead and see if it showed up in, in game. Hopefully it showed up properly. There. As you see, the ship's pointing the right way, luckily. <laughs> So it's generally the right size, and the guns are on, and uh, and it's got the little bits of glowy that I was talking about on the uh, on the saucer part. In the next tutorial I do, I'm going to be explaining how to add engine particles and such, and positioning everything. But uh, that looks pretty good for right now. Now there's a lot of uh, yeah, you see it's a bit of a wobble on my ship. Uh oh, hang on one second. We'll just take care of that. Oh, now you see I actually I uh, left the polys for the for the actual ramp backwards. I didn't flip them, so they're facing the right wrong way. And the uh, the lip of the airlock is a little too big, but uh, that's what tweaking is for. You go back and forth between Blender a lot when you're got the ship in. I don't know the exact dimensions of the airlock myself. But uh, yeah, that's getting the ship into Rodina. After some tweaking, you, you get used to it, it gets a lot easier. I probably should have made the bottom of the ship a little flatter. But uh, yeah, I'll fix all that for the next tutorial. And there you have it. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful for you guys. Uh, I'll try to get the particle engines tutorial out as soon as I can. It's kind of my first tutorial, so I was a little nervous about it. But hopefully there's more to come in the future. It was actually pretty fun. But uh, you guys have a good one.